And now we're getting ready for our segment, Get Connected with Trisha Crane. Good morning. Welcome to the Get Connected segment on the Alabama Way. My name is Tricia Powell Crane. I am the Executive Director of the Alabama School Connection, which is a news organization that covers K-12 education in Alabama. This morning, I'm very excited to have with us Christina Scott, who is the Executive Director of Alabama Possible. Um, she's going to tell us a little bit about Alabama Possible, but she's here this morning to discuss a program called Cash for College, which is about right. completing the FAFSA, the Federal... It's the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. That's what it is, okay? So FAFSA is what we're saying if it sounds like we're speaking some strange language. So um, Christina's going to help us with that. Um, and thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks so much for having me, Tricia. Absolutely. Um, Alabama, with possible, is a statewide nonprofit organization. We were founded in 1993, and we work to break down barriers to prosperity through education, research, collaboration and advocacy. Wow, okay, that's a lot. That's a lot. It of is a I, lot, yes. I really didn't realize that Alabama Possible had been around that long. Um, I know that y'all, I've heard the name my whole life here in, in Alabama, and I guess I'm, I'm dating myself. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate you being here because this program, um, it's about getting children, graduates and others into college uh, and you know the FAFSA is out there it's confusing for some people we'll get into that a little later um, but first tell us a little bit about you know uh, I understand you have the blueprints initiative exactly so our work with the financial aid form really came out of our experience with our blueprints college access initiative and okay. that's a program where we have um, where we team up college students with low-income minority and first-generation going college high school students while they're still in high school. Mm -hmm. And we have a curriculum that we use, and so the college students come to school each week and work with through a curriculum that helps students plan, prepare, and pursue post-secondary education. Right. And so what we found through that is that there's so much misinformation and confusion and anxiety around paying for college. Mm -hmm. And we started talking to students immediately. When we started this work, we started talking to them immediately about, do you want to go to a two-year school? Do you want to go to a four-year school? Do you want to go take a technical education mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. and be a welder or an electrician? Or would you rather go to a four, you know, do an academic pathway, either to transfer or to go straight to a four-year school? Mm -hmm. And we learned very quickly that for our students, they don't even understand how to pay for college. And mm -hmm. so until they understand that there's resources out there to help them pay for college, then it becomes very difficult for them to make that dream a reality, right? Because right? they all right. want to go to college and do something right. after they graduate from high school. I mean, we have great students that we work with, mm -hmm. but that understanding that it really can become real right. was missing from the conversation. And so we honed in on the importance of the financial aid form. Mm -hmm. A couple years ago, we started working with the State Department of Education mm -hmm. and some local school districts around a grant program that they had to do financial aid work in um, a few high school districts around the state. Mm -hmm. And what we realized is that the high schools and the counselors and teachers have so much influence and are able to support the students and their families. Right, right. And so if we're really going to build a college-going culture mm -hmm. in Alabama and ensure that every student graduates from high school, college, and career ready, that we can tap into that existing network and right. um, work with guidance counselors to help them help their students complete their financial aid form. And so yeah. that's how we came to this work is mm -hmm. it was based on our experience working with students and our experience working with some high schools mm -hmm. and really thinking about how we could scale it up um, both in the central Alabama region and the Bold Goals region mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that Dan Stevens talked with you about yes, recently yes. but also statewide. Wow, that is a, it's an excellent initiative and I, I can't imagine um, you know, just being able to provide those resources to the high schools and the high school counselors when they're they're already dealing with a lot of stuff. So, exactly. So it, through this cash for college, the resources that you provide to schools is it is it educational material? Is it people? I mean, are you able to help them with 
fairs or how, how does it work? Does everybody do it differently? Um, everyone does it a little bit differently. Okay. And so some schools are, some high schools already have great programs in place mm -hmm. and have great relationships with local colleges and universities and, that help provide some expertise. Okay. Other schools are like, we know we're supposed to be doing this and we have no idea where to even start. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. what we really want to do is build a, what I like to think of as a learning community. And so the schools that have been doing it and are very successful can mm -hmm. help teach the schools who are just starting the work on what they're doing and Absolutely. that we can help provide some structure and focus and resources. And so we're asking high schools to opt in. Um, mm -hmm. It's something very similar to what they did for November's College Application Week. Okay. Where um, but we're asking schools to complete an application that's available at cashforcollegealabama.org okay. and to set a goal for their s school's completion. And so there's information available on what their past completion rates are and they can see where, where do they want to go. Because again, right. they know where they want to go and are the drivers of change, the schools themselves. Right. And then we are going to do two webinars at the end of January with more information about the program okay. and provide guidance counselors some training, basic training, on how to complete the FAFSA that mm -hmm. really is intended to give them a basic knowledge of terms and what's available and what a Pell Grant is That's or what so work helpful. study is. Right. Um, and then to be able to provide them weekly conference calls and mm -hmm. um, technical assistance to be able to be a connector to local colleges and universities because that's part of what our job is. We're used to picking up the phone and calling people we don't know. And, right, right. and so to be a right. connector for them with local colleges and universities who also really want to see more students go to college. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, and to be a support and to help share if one high school in Huntsville has having really great results. Well, mm -hmm. what are they doing that's working right. so that a high school in Mobile can copy that? Right. Um, this is all about learning together. And then in May, we're go or sorry, in June, we're going to have a celebration mm -hmm. and uh, share best practices and get everyone in a room together, which can be so powerful. Wow. Yeah. And also the school that has the highest completion by March 1st which is a big deadline in the financial aid world. Exactly. Um, and the school that's most improved will get grant awards. And so they can use those grant awards to take, go on a college campus field trip or to wow. um, give a student who needs a scholarship a scholarship, to go to what conference they're interested in. But we want the schools, we think that each school probably has different needs, and so we right. really want them to make the local decision on how to use their grant award. Gosh, okay. So so for high schools, if, uh, if the folks are watching, we have teachers that watch. Exactly. And, um, so if, if, you're, if they're hearing this and they're thinking, wow, this is really something I hope I would like our high school to do or our, our high school in the community to do, what's the best way to do that? Should they call the high school to see, hey, are y'all doing this already? I heard this on the Alabama Way. This is a great thing to do. And to contact Alabama Possible? Um, what I would say is, yes, talk to the senior guidance counselor and this okay. program um, in high schools is really for high school seniors they're the students okay. in the high school that need to fill out the financial aid form so call the guidance counselor if you're a okay. teacher reach out to your principal or your senior guidance counselor or senior class sponsor and ask them if they've heard about this okay. and if you're an active member of the pta or a school volunteer ask people if they're participating because again we really see that we want to support high schools in doing this work, and that's right. when something that's been successful. Um, there's more information available at cashforcollegealabama.org, okay. um, or they can call our office. Um, okay. So, but the best thing to do is ask, to be an advocate and ask your high school to participate. And the application okay. deadline is January 29th. Okay. For 2016? For, t for the t spring 2016 filing season, yes. Okay, okay. All right, so now we've got more to talk about. Time yes. goes fast. We have more to, more to talk about. So if you will, please stick with us through the break, and we'll be back with Christina. Welcome back. Um, thanks for joining us here on the Get Connected segment for the Alabama Way. Christina Scott from Alabama Possible and Cash for College yes. is joining us this morning to talk about the uh, FAFSA, okay, and that's that, that federal aid uh, application that you fill out to try to earn Pell Grant money or make you eligible for student loans and that sort of thing. Christina, in the last segment you talked about um, what Cash for College is and, and how Alabama Possible is helping schools get more 
um, high school seniors to complete the FAFSA. Let's talk a little bit about, because there are a lot of, you know, it's kind of like an urban myth about, right. oh my gosh, you know, the FAFSA is so hard and it's changing and there's all this um, talk about the FAFSA. But there's also a lot of talk about student debt. Exactly. And, you know, how much it costs to go to college. So help us work through that if you can. Okay. So the FAFSA, or Free Application for Federal Student Aid, mm -hmm. or Financial Aid Form, which is sometimes what I say okay. instead of using acronyms, the mm -hmm. Financial Aid Form is what students complete. So they're eligible for Pell Grants, for work study jobs for need-based financial aid. Okay. And increasingly, colleges are requiring that students complete their FAFSA to, for their merit-based aid. Because the colleges want it's two different pots of money, and so mm -hmm. they want to make sure that if you're going to Birmingham Southern or the University of Alabama mm -hmm. or another school, they want to make sure that you get all the need-based aid you're eligible for right, before right, they dip into their merit-based aid. And mm -hmm. so it's a way, cause again, it's different pots of money. Okay. And so um, nearly every student who is thinking about going to college really needs to be thinking about completing their financial aid form. Right. And it is more difficult in the tax form. It's widely considered to be more it's difficult true. in the tax form. Mm -hmm. It has more than a hundred questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's all completed online. So mm -hmm. there's not an, you know, there's no option to print off the forms and complete it on paper the okay. way that you still can do your taxes on right. paper. Right. So it makes it a, a challenge mm -hmm. for families. And mm -hmm. it's also a piece where the students that we work with have to have their legal guardian or custodial parent involved with it. And so particularly with the population of students that we work with, minority, low income, and first generation college going mm -hmm. students, it is one of the challenges in the process because their parents may not have gone to college. They have complicated family situations. Sure. And it's the one piece of this college going puzzle that we have got to have the custodial parents cooperation with. It's not oh, the wow. grandmother they live with or a cousin who's right. their advisor on this. Their parent has to be involved. Right. Um, but you know, there is a network of tax preparation. And so whether you go to the United Way or Impact Alabama or Impact America to get, America to get your taxes done or, right. um, or go to a commercial tax preparer, people are used to going to get help to fill out their taxes. And That's we're true. really just starting to build that network here in Alabama for help with the financial aid form. Mm -hmm. And again, um, this is so important for students' economic futures. Mm -hmm. Nine out of 10 students who complete the financial aid form mm -hmm. nationally do attend college the following fall. And wow. it's really important for our state's economy and for our economic well-being that students think about what they're going to do after high school. Mm -hmm. By the end of the decade, more than half of the jobs in the state of Alabama are going to require uh, certificate or a degree after high school. So that might be a welding wow. certificate or an English or a medical degree, right? Sure. So more than half of jobs are going to require post-secondary education. Hmm. And it also increases your earning capacity immensely. It's the difference exactly. between a job and a career is having post-secondary education. Mm -hmm. And we talk a lot about workforce development and economic development. And mm -hmm. so that number of how many working age adults with a uh, two-year, four-year degree is something mm -hmm. that employers look at when they're thinking about coming to Alabama. Well, in it's Alabama, true. only 32% of working-age adults have a two-year, four-year degree, but more than mm -hmm. half the jobs are going to require it. And so we're really looking at young people There's as, a there, yeah. yes, as being yeah. able, we need to equip them to help fill that gap right. so that right. Mercedes and Honda and Airbus and all the defense right. manufacturers in Huntsville um, and UAB and the hospitals mm -hmm. all have mm -hmm. their next generation of workers. And so mm -hmm. that impacts their each individual's economic security. Mm -hmm. 
it also impacts our community's prosperity. Right. And so that's what's really interesting and neat about this work is that I know I'm a second generation college student mm -hmm. and I know that my life was transformed mm -hmm. by going to college and certainly my mother who mm -hmm. um, was such an influence in my life. She was a teacher and a first generation college student. I see. And so for her that was going to college and getting a job as a teacher was transformative mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in our family's economic security. Right. And so um, I want to make sure that our students all know that it is a possibility for them. Right. It's what's needed right. and that there's going to be a network of people who are going to help them overcome those hurdles or those barriers to their college education mm -hmm. like this financial aid form. Right, because the money the cost of college. I have three children who are all in college right now. Yes, it, the cost it's of staggering. College is staggering, and all we hear about is tuitions going up, and student loans are going up, and kids come out with crushing debt, and you know it takes how many years to pay off your student loans, and so that's really got to be a commonplace discussion. People talk about it at their dinner tables. Exactly. So how do we? You know, it's wonderful to think. Oh, here's an avenue that that kids can actually somebody somebody's going to help them with the FAFSA. I was, it was daunting, and I considered yeah. myself to be fairly good technologically. <laughs> exactly. It was daunting. So, um, well, so, so really what you're doing, you're helping, you're, you're not only creating the access, but you're also really helping folks fill out the FAFSA. Exactly. So with the students that we work with, um, most of them will qualify for at least mm -hmm. some of a Pell Grant. Now, Pell Grant is free money to go to college. Thank you for this clarifying year, that. This year, it is a little over $5,800 a year. Mm -hmm. So that they get no strings attached, low-income students to go to college. Mm -hmm. um, but also, we see that I hear so much like, well, you're... I, my family won't qualify for financial aid, I but we're that. not even... So we're not even going to fill it out. Well... We hear from lots of middle class families. Mm -hmm. We filled out the FAFSA and who knew? Because we have three students in college, exactly. they did qualify for some financial exactly. aid or they were eligible for merit-based aid as a result of filling out the FAFSA that we never would have known about it if we didn't fill out the form. Exactly. And it's a way to reduce that debt, that loan burden mm -hmm. and increase the student's likelihood of starting and completing college. And so it's important for every family. But we're just leaving millions, tens of millions of dollars on the table mm -hmm. by not completing their financial aid form. Mm -hmm. um, something else that's an important part of this conversation that I hope that we're having in our communities mm -hmm. is that um, you, when you hear about students who graduate with a lot of debt, mm -hmm. that there are lots of jobs out there that are high need. We have a big need for them with, and they have good wages and they can't find enough employees mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. qualified. And so that's a separate conversation yeah. is yeah. that if you, um, to think about what you're studying in college and right. to think about how it connects with the workforce because you're needs talking about loan state. forgiveness right? exactly I well mean, it's loan are... forgiveness or it's i can get a job with a good wage right out of college and so mm -hmm. i may have some debt but it's easy to go get a job right. and i'm going to be able to pay off the debt or right there's incentives for that field, like loan forgiveness for, mm -hmm. you know, teachers if they agree to teach in a exactly. low-income district can get some loan forgiveness to do that. So right. it's all part of a, the financial aid form is just one step in a robust conversation mm -hmm. that we're having in education in Alabama about workforce development and connecting college and career and what jobs are available out right. there. But what's clear is that more and more jobs are requiring something after mm -hmm. high school. Mm -hmm. And so we want our students to make the choice that's right for them, mm -hmm. not what their parents mm -hmm. want them to do or not what their counselor thinks they should do, but right. how do we may have each student make the choice that's right for them? Absolutely. And, and so, I appreciate that. And I mean, this is such an important topic because it's really, it's, you know, one form could break down that barrier between it, you and actually going to college. Exactly. Right? It's great to work with students and have them fill mm -hmm. out the form and see that they can get a Pell Grant and to realize that that college dream, that acceptance letter is not 
it's not an empty promise. They can right. do this, right? And right. so you can go to, for a student who gets a Pell Grant, and that, you know, for some students that may be all the help they get to pay for college, right. but they can go to a community college. Right. They can go to Lawson State or Jeff State or to right. Calhoun or Wallace State. They can go um, and pay for their tuition and required fees and that it makes that dream a reality. For mm -hmm. other students, it's a really important piece of, I'd much rather have a $5,000 Pell Grant than a $5,000 student loan. Exactly. And so it helps every student, again, make the choice that's right for them. Thank and so you. there's more information available at right. Cash for College Alabama. Okay. Um, go to the website, and there's information about there, about, up there both for educators, okay. and there's a link to another webpage with information for students and families about how to pay for college. Thank you. Thank you so much. Your, your excitement about this, I, I, I get this from you. This is an electric <laughs> conversation. I appreciate it. Thank I hope you. our viewers will take advantage of this and learn more, and thank you so much for being here. Well, thank us. you for having me. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching.